hi welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be a video on Montessori for one-year-olds to two-year-olds it's more for kind of younger toddler um, I've been um, kind of requested this type of video by some of my subscribers and a couple of people on Instagram because um, I'm posting a lot of things on kind of older toddler now that my daughter's getting uh, older <laughs> um, but yeah I wanted to cover kind of Montessori for the younger toddler so anywhere from kind of one year upwards i'm going to cover activities and practical life the environment all the things that you kind of need to know and to give you lots of ideas at home if your toddlers are kind of um past the the 12 month mark and you're kind of thinking what kind of things can i do with them what kind of things can i offer them you know what kind of environment should i have for them that kind of thing um obviously when i do montessori it's kind of our take on it I suppose um, but I always love giving ideas and tips and things to help you out so hopefully this video will be helpful for you um, and give you lots of ideas. So this is kind of an early example of a pegboard um, so this comes with all these different boards and they all have a different number on the corner which relates to kind of the difficulty and the number of pegs involved so you've got a really simple one here uh, which is literally just red pieces and they poke them through the holes and um, so this is good for color matching it's good for fine motor because they've got to kind of hold it in a particular way and wiggle it to get it in the holes um, and it comes with all these different colors and you what you do is kind of take them out and put them on the box and then you can swap them around and there's loads of like different ones so they don't get bored. And puzzles are really good um, for anywhere from one year plus because they're kind of using learning to use that pincer grip and pick up the pegs. Obviously they come in different size pegs you can get much bigger ones if your toddler is younger and then these ones are kind of a lot smaller um, but yeah they're really great um, activity and it's really good language opportunity as well because if you've got something like a fruit puzzle like this or a themed puzzle maybe you've got one on clothing or cars or airplanes or butterflies then it's a good way for them to learn the names of everything these are really fun puzzles by Melissa and Doug they're sound puzzles so it's a standard peg puzzle but when you put the piece in <laughs> it makes a sound these were really popular with my toddler they come in all different kind of designs this one's cool because it's musical instruments it's another kind of language opportunity to talk about different different instruments Hi. kiwi apple orange so wooden blocks are a really good idea um, depending on where your child is with their development but something big like this they'll be so interested in they might not want to stack it they might just want to kind of empty the basket out or just kind of hold them to their face and have a look through the middle um, at the different colors but there's really no right way with open-ended materials uh, they don't have to stack them children some children just aren't into stacking that much and some children are it just depends so with open-ended materials the beauty is just to let them explore and at the age of one to two that's what life is all about it's about exploring their environment and kind of building those skills like gross motor skills fine motor skills um, language all those kind of things so that's all we're doing is just giving them access to their environment and the, kind of the freedom to explore it but yeah these are great these are from a company called ticket um, and or you could go for more of like a standard block like this um, and these are just great for exploring as well um, and whatever they want to do with them really stack um, kind of like empty them out um, you can color sort as well because they do kind of colour ones and then even these actually so these are magnet tiles I they probably won't start con building kind of construction with them until they get older but they're just really interesting because they're magnetic um, and they kind of they stick together like this 
So they'll kind of enjoy pulling them apart and figuring out what it's all about. Like, what is that? Why do they stick together? Um, and you can talk about, there's lots of language opportunities here as well. You can talk about magnets, you can talk about colours, you can do colour sorting. You can talk about the shapes as well. So this is a good introduction to squares and circles and triangles and all those kind of things. So this is a Melissa and Doug Latches board. Um, I think I introduced this when my daughter was about one and a half, maybe two. Um, but you could introduce this at any age, really, because it's perfectly safe. There's no small pieces on it. But yeah, it's got all different types of latches. They can learn how to open them. And behind you've got different um, number of animals. You've got four bunnies here. On this one, you've got five frogs. Um, but yeah, they're all really different. And this was my favourite one. You kind of like twist it, but it's different ways for them to figure it out. It's like a problem solving. So this um, coin box was a firm favourite for a really long time. Um, it's really good for younger children because uh, they can use it for posting. Um, so if your child's not at the stage where they can post such a small slot, you can make your own box and just put holes in it and different size slots and things. For them to post i did a lot of diys when my daughter was younger but yeah when she got a little bit older kind of one and a half to two she was able to post little coins um i obviously had to keep an eye on her that she didn't put them in her mouth so it's completely up to you as to whether you feel comfortable offering this um depending on how much your child mouths <laughs> their toys um and then as they get older they'll learn to kind of put this key in and out and to turn it and that kind of thing but yeah, this is really cool. Even if you don't want to offer the coins for posting, it's really fun just to open and close uh, to try and figure out this key situation and then for them to fill it with different things. Um, my daughter was really into filling everything, <laughs> any box she could get her hand on, hands on. And this is a phone. And this kind of thing I think is really fun to have around um, because children enjoy doing the things that we do. So if they see us on the phone, and talking and they love to kind of replicate that so this is just a it's kind of old-fashioned vintage phone which i love um i think i got it from a supermarket and it was in a sale so it's probably like five pounds or something but it's cool because they can press all the buttons it's an early introduction to numbers as well um and it's quite cool lifting it up and kind of mia would have a little conversation with her granddad on here <laughs> and her grandma and so that was kind of cool so these are a couple of um pull activities um at the age of one my daughter was really into pushing and pulling so we got her a few kind of toys for that so this is a little dog oh it's all tangled hang on <laughs> here we go okay See, it's a little dog that you pull along and it's little kind of feet wiggle and it's ears wiggle. She loved pulling this up and down the kind of living room and when we went out um, in the garden. This is another one here which is um, a deer zoo box and it comes with all these little animals. They can take them out and put them in. And again, there's another language opportunity for exploring the different types of animals in here. Um, and then as they get older, you can kind of point out... Um, the names of them you can say which one is the camel and when they get to a certain point they'll understand you and they'll be able to do that and um, they'll be able to find it so this is another pull activity it's a little caterpillar and as they pull it, it does this kind of wriggle um, so that's kind of cool I think I got this from a charity shop for like a pound um, but yeah these like, these kind of toys are quite popular and I did t tend to find them in charity shops quite a lot um, or if you're in the US, you have kind of like thrift stores, always a good place to kind of look for toys. Because um, they get damaged and they get broken and you don't want to be spending fortune on toys when sometimes they get bored of them very quickly as well. And that was my kind of theory. You know, it's expensive enough having children without buying, you know, thousands of pounds worth of toys. Um, and we like minimal kind of life here too, so we don't like to have too many things and also um we don't like to waste our money but also also i love reusing things as well you know i love um being able to pick something up that another child has played with and enjoyed and now my child is going to play with um so yeah that's kind of what we're about 
So I talked about the pull activities. We also had some push activities because when they're at the age of one to two, they're really getting you moving around and they might be walking by then. Um, and they kind of want to get make use of their new mobility. Um, so we've got lots of these um, push activities as well. These are little push toys, sorry. This is a little lion, but it comes on a stick like this. Um, and they, they push it along. Honestly, I have two of these um, because obviously I child mind. So I tend, when they were younger, I tend to buy more than one. So we didn't have a lot of fighting. <laughs> um, but this one is a lion. You can buy these online really easily. Uh, and the, this was the favourite toy probably for about six months. Like every day, this was the first thing that the children would go to. So another wonderful thing to offer to a younger toddler is musical instruments. And uh, they love to handle things, to make sounds, um, and all instruments are obviously used in very different ways. So we've got the xylophone there, we've got lots of these kind of bells which make wonderful sound. Um, we've got things that they can put in their mouths and blow, because that's quite a hard skill for a toddler, toddler. so little recorders. We've got um, maracas and shakers. These are claves, I think they're pronounced like that, and they just bang them together, um, which are really cool. They play with these all the time. We've got tambourines, um, little kind of whistles and different whistles. This I would absolutely recommend, a uh, harmonica. This was like the most loved <laughs> musical instrument for such a long time. Even now, my daughter loves finding this and playing with it so I definitely recommend this and there's another one here this really cool little drum drums are really cool um I've got a few wooden drums I'll link them below and this little one you can just get anywhere they do bigger versions of this as well it's like a bongo drum but they're really cool when we was younger we loved to give her um treasure baskets and uh, this is just a little idea but um, I, I tend to, when she was younger, I tend to just put things in baskets and just let her explore. And I love to I love to let her explore kind of natural materials. This is a little box which I got from my parents when they visited Egypt when I was younger. And I've had it forever. Um, but she saw this when she was about one year old and she really took a liking to it. And she loved opening and closing it and putting things inside and just carrying it around. It was a perfect size for her little hands. So yeah, anything that you've got around the house that you think they might like to open and close and just explore and fill and do whatever they wanna do. Um, it's all helping with building those skills um, and that, those kind of fine motor skills and everything else. Um, Tupperware is a really good one if you've got little boxes or even big ones and with different types of kind of um, lids that are kind of easy to get on and off this is a mirror as well this is a little bit tricky to open for a kind of younger toddler but just to give you an idea of the kind of things that you could put in there you can put a little kind of handheld mirror um for them to explore they'll really enjoy kind of looking through that i would also put things like pine cones in here like bottle brushes are really fun because they're such an unusual um, material Things like um, small rocks, not too small, but big enough for them to hold and kind of feel the weight of them. Not small enough for them to put them in their mouths. <laughs> but yeah, any kind of natural materials you can find. So these are different variations on blocks. Um, I showed you a few blocks uh, before. But these are like squishy blocks and they make a sound when they squeeze them. Um, and then this is standard kind of wooden block as well in, in a cube size. Um, there's lots of different ones that you can buy. But I tend, to, when she was younger, to kind of mix it up. I'd put them all in a big basket and she'd empty them out and just kind of explore them one by one. So the rainbow is quite a cool idea for younger toddlers. Um, I will be honest with you, my toddler didn't play with this very much when she was younger. It's only now that she's getting to kind of between two and three that she started using this and stacking it and kind of, it was more when her imagination grew. So she used to pick these up and she'd put little babies in them and use them for beds, for rocking. 
um, she kind of put things inside them and carry them around um, and then she'd obviously do stacking and all that kind of thing but it didn't really happen until she turned to um, so it's up to you as to whether you want to introduce this kind of thing um, you could get the smaller version which is like this size which is easier for a child to get on and off a shelf um, so, and it's cheaper as well and then maybe you can introduce the bigger one when they get older but yeah it's um, up to you but I do love these rainbows they do get paid with a lot now just when she was younger, not so much. I wanted to talk about art. So at the moment we have an art trolley like this. Um, I think that you could possibly set something up like this for a younger child as well. If I'm honest with you, I didn't start introducing this until probably the children were about two. Because there's lots of loose parts and lots of things for them to empty out. And what I did is I would get a tray like a standard tray like this and I would set up an art activity on there so I'd put paper a little a few pens and they could pull the whole tray out and get started now because when you're, they're a younger toddler they might not be at the stage where they can set up an activity on their own so the easier you can make it for them to kind of get in and get started the better really so that's what I would do um, but it depends on where your toddler is in the stage of development if you want to put some pens on the um, on their shelf unit uh, or put them in a little box that they can open and um, pencils crayons that kind of thing then they can go straight to that area and open them and get started and just some paper maybe in a box or whatever that they can access that's a good way to kind of do art and then when it comes to painting um, you can set up maybe like a watercolor because it's less messy so this is a watercolors um, you can put that on a tray with a little pot of water and a paintbrush and they can get started straight away. So this is our kind of um, play basket, role play basket, whatever you want to call it. In here we've got lots of different hats, um, lots of silks and lots of different bags as well. So this is a little Andrex puppy bag. And the children love carrying this around and filling it with different things. I'm sure there's something in there. A chimpanzee. <laughs> um, and a little doggy thing. Um, and then we've got... So when I was just out in cherry shops, I'd find little, like, small bags with zips and different openings that they could play with. So there's lots of different hats that they put on. And in here, I'm pretty sure, yeah, we've got a purse as well. So this was really interesting to my toddler. She'd love, I would get her some old cards. I would make cards as well so she could slot them in. And then I'd give her some coins that she could um, play with as well. And she she loved opening and closing and doing the zip and put everything in and taking it out and carrying it around. And it's really fun for toddlers to do. So if you can go to a charity shop and find um, different bags or, I'm sure I've got some more in here. Or purses um, they're always the type of thing that you can find in cherry shops and um, bits of rope here um, they love playing tug of war with that at the moment oh yeah this is the one I wanted to show you gosh this is a cute little bag that I found at like a craft fair and a little old lady made it and um, it's so tiny and soft and cute and this is like one of the favorite bags for like filling and carrying around and doing like role play with and all that kind of thing so vehicles and um cars are such a good idea for younger children they love that um motion of pushing them back and forwards um so we had a lot of little cars something bigger than this actually let me show you so yeah like this kind of thing ambulance i got from charity shop and um, charity shops are really good for finding cars and things the construction vehicles are cool because they're other language opportunities you can talk about mixers and excavators um, and diggers and all that kind of thing um, trains are a really good idea to introduce to younger children um, and then if you've got anything like a track or the roads these are from way to play um, the flexible roads they can be used indoors and outdoors and they're washable and all that kind of stuff and then just the standard track um depends what your child is into um, this is always in the playroom and it has been for a really long time and my child 
does really play with this quite a lot. So talking about more open-ended materials, something that we had from when she was one year old was a big basket of balls. And they were these kind of things. So I tried to get balls which had different weights, different colours and just different textures. Like these are quite cool because they have this bumpy texture. This one makes a sound. And this one is a real squidgy one with a ladybird on. But yeah, any kind of different shaped balls because children love throwing. When they get older, they can sort them by size. Um, yeah, they'll be going through different schemas. So just look out for your child. If they're going through like a trajectory schema, they might like throwing things. So it's really good to have a ball of a uh, basket of balls, sorry, that they can throw around and, you know, particularly like in the garden or something. You can get um, wooden balls, wicker balls, anything really. I just had a literally a basket of all different balls and they were so interesting to my toddler. She would empty them out and throw them around and roll them and we'd roll them back to each other. So this ball run um, has been a firm favourite since my child was younger than one, I think. I got this from a charity shop as well. It was an absolute steal. I think it cost me about two pound. It didn't come with any balls, but luckily I had quite a lot of ball activities anyway. So these are wooden balls um, and they can, yeah, just roll it down like that. Oh, I've got a little pig person in there. <laughs> <A> little astronaut. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there's lots of different variations of ball runs. I don't think you can get this one anymore, so I can't link it for you. But I'll see if I can find something similar, and I'll link that below. So this is a standard ring stacker. You've probably seen these. They come in all different designs. Um, you can get more natural coloured ones as well. They're really good for um, practising threading them on to um, a pole like this. And then as they get older, you can get ones with smaller poles and um, different directions and different shapes and all that kind of thing. But this is kind of like the first level really. It has a wobbly bottom, so it makes it a little bit more challenging while it's moving around for them to thread it on. Yeah, these are really great for, for practicing, kind of threading that on there and the size and all that kind of thing. So this Jack in a Box was a really big hit when my toddler was probably about a year and a half. Um, it's got this little handle on the side which they have to learn to turn. It's quite a difficult uh, movement actually for a toddler to kind of coordinate. Um, but they absolutely loved it. It was so much fun when it popped out. Obviously there's a few different steps um, to this kind of toy. They have to learn to push that in, um, put the lid down and try and get that down at the same time and then also turn the handle as well and obviously because it's a musical toy it makes it a bit more interesting. Um, and then as she get, got older I started to introduce different music boxes so we went with that one first because it had quite a big handle and now we have this kind of thing which is a little music box. And they all play different songs and then it's got a smaller handle um because uh, she's been working on that pincer grip so she's a lot more um, able to hold something a bit smaller like that so i think peg people and peg toys are really good for younger children particularly big ones like this is they're too big to swallow but they're really nice size for them to hold on to um, and they're just really fun as well um, you can get these in different colors so if you want to do a colour activity, you can get a whole pack of different colours and you can talk about turquoise and you could talk about ruby red and all these different types of colours and, and kind of enhance their vocabulary. Um, I wouldn't go for little ones like this. These are just little cheapy ones that I painted. I got off eBay, I think. I would go for something a lot bigger. Um, I'll link some below. These were all hand painted by a wonderful company called Peggy and Pip. I only just got these ones. These are occupational pegs. They're so cute. I don't know what this one is. I th I'm going with air traffic controller just because of like the little speaker thing and microphone. So animals is an oh I've got some little trolls in here. Animals is another one that is really great for um, a younger toddler because they're so interesting to them. Um, really great vocabulary as well. Talking about the different types of animals, you can talk about the markings, the kind of sounds they make. So particularly with younger children. They're really interested in farm animals because they're the kind of animals that you can see when you're out and about. So, you know, the cow does moo sound and that kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't typically give them a big basket like this because younger toddlers tend to empty out baskets. So I would usually, when she was younger, I would put in maybe like five or six animals and I would rotate them, change them 
Um, and then, yeah, they're kind of just so fascinated with holding them and exploring them. And then also when your child gets older, you can start using these for kind of small world setups. Um, I did a small world setup using sand and just natural things that I found in the garden, like cuttings from bushes, just for little places where animals could hide and things that they could eat and that kind of thing. And it was really, really successful. So I did plan to do this video all in one, but it's worked out quite long. So the first video is going to be activities, toys and resources and then I'm going to do it in three parts, all for children between one and two. So my next video is probably going to be practical life and then I'll talk about the environment and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm sorry it's not all in one but I didn't want to do like a 30 minute video because no one's going to watch that. Uh, so I tried to make it a bit more kind of manageable for you especially busy mums, you can't sit there watching like YouTube all day. So, uh, so yeah, I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, and I'll be posting my next video, uh, hopefully within the next kind of five days. So thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Um, I'd love you to watch some of my other videos. Um, let me know your thoughts. Any comments you have, then pop them below. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.